Hey guys, I've been playing with the new Ecutech Race ROM, and I wanted to take a second to show some of you guys who might not have the software yet uh, some of the custom map functionality and different cool things that they give you to play with. <clears throat> and I actually kind of stumbled upon a really good example of how this can be useful. I've when I first started tuning my car and then throughout, I've had a problem where I had to kind of do this crazy hack in order to get the car to start or else the IPW uh, for the port injectors would be way too high and it would run way too rich and it, and it wouldn't turn over. So uh, I'll open VRZ edit and you can see how I used to solve the problem. Uh, so this is the cranking injector pulse width table, which if you look at it, it looks like I mean, it's a two-dimensional map of coolant temperature to injector pulse width in milliseconds during cranking, presumably. Uh, but in trying to fix the problem that I was having, it seemed like this was not directly controlling uh, the, the IPW during cranking. And I found this map, which, you know, I found that I could, this was a multiplier, uh, I guess, for requested volume or something, that... I could set, you know, cut this down to 20, you know, 0.25 or 25 percent, and the car would start reliably. I never really understood why. I just kind of presumed that there was some other map that was in IPW, and maybe this was like just a compensation for it. So, anyway, and Ecu and the, but this was the hack. This was how I was able to fix the problem and get the car to start reliably. So if you look in Ecutech here, they only have one table related to cranking, you know, fueling. And it definitely looks a lot more like a compensation as opposed to something that's dictating what the injector pulse width should be at these different coolant temperatures. But the cool thing about you know race ROM and having the custom maps is that we don't have to do the hack to fix the problem. I mean, if we need a map that is coolant temperature versus injector pulse width during cranking, then we can just make one. So I will show you how I did that. So if you look at the actual custom map, you'll see that it's really a 2D map, uh, kind of in the space of a 3D map, because they're all 3D maps. So if you want to make one a 2D map, you basically just uh, turn off the x-axis. The value is always zero. And then you know you can paste these v values across and interpolate some stuff here to say that it has sensible values. But what we really care about is these values, which are going to be our IPW, and the, the y-axis, which is coolant temperature. And just to show you how that's defined, uh, this map is an extremely simple example. There's not really much to it. It's just a two-dimensional map. So the activation is that it's always active. Of course, you could activate it on any of these things with thresholds and uh, you know, up, above, below, in between. You know, all, all sorts of different ways you can do it. There's also activation delays, and uh, you know, you can set the thresholds right there. The enable that just lets you pick which map mode you want to. Uh, enable the the custom map in. Uh, the illuminate check engine light when map is active is pretty cool. I use that on my boost cut to uh, you know show me that something is wrong. Uh, one thing to take note of is that you have to uh, deselect this debug mode. It's selected by default so rem remember to turn it off or else you'll just log results but it won't actually perform any of the calculation or whatever you're asking it to do. Uh, of course, you can also hear it says enable it only when you're in speed density mode or only when launch control is active or only when traction control is disabled. So there's a lot of different ways that you can define when you want it to be available. Uh, the integrals, we'll talk about that some other time, but that's a, for, you know, uh, for like a feedback system, you might use, you can use either proportional or, or integral control. And if you're going to use an integral setup, you would use that. So the output definitions are, and the input definitions are pretty much the important part in this case. And you can see we've selected cranking PI pulse width, uh, and we're going to replace the channel value with the map's output. Uh, you can see there we could also add it or multiply it or you know, use it as a min or a max or do some the integral stuff. So there's lots of different ways that you can uh, you know, apply the values inside of your maps to any of these uh, different uh, values within the ECU. The input definitions are done much the same way here. Uh, in our case, our x-axis is going to be unused. 
and our y-axis is going to be coolant temp but you can see there's a wide range of uh, different things that you could use there as well and in the end that basically gives us exactly what we want we have a table where we can dictate exactly what we want the injector pulse width to be for a given coolant temperature during cranking. And the best part about it is that I didn't have to go in and, you know, basically do perform some hack to try to get around some problem because I, because I can't just say, you know, dictate exactly what I want. So that's about it. Uh, just a real, you know, like I said, it was a real brief overview of what the custom maps are, how they work, and, you know, how you can use them to solve different problems. So. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to PM me or something. Thanks a lot.